Hi guys, my name is Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something that I haven't done in a very long time. This is sort of a jump off of a video that I made four or five years ago. I will link it here and down below. A video in which I sort of talk about all of the Stephen King books that I have read, give you what I remember about them, and then I talked about my unread books. So I'm going to update you on the unread Stephen King books that I own because there are a lot of Stephen King books that I haven't read, but these are the ones that I own. Let's start with the one that I'm already sort of in the middle of, and that is Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King. So this is a chunker of a book that has very mixed reviews. So far, I am enjoying it, but I have some issues with the world building. So the premise is very much like The Stand. There is a plague that is sort of affecting the population. However, it only affects women and it causes them to fall asleep. And that is really all that I've got to at this point. This is a book that I have a lot of questions about and I have concerns about with the world building. Also, like the disease implies, Aurora or Sleeping Beauty, that original fairy tale, um, or the earlier versions of that fairy tale, it contained within it a lot of violence. Uh, one of the versions of Sleeping Beauty, she is visited by the prince who thinks, damn, she's beautiful, I'm gonna have sex with her unconscious body. And then she wakes up pregnant. And then they get married and they live happily ever after. So I'm curious if that darkness and that trauma is also contained within this book and how that is addressed as well. So the next book I have here is Full Dark, No Stars. This is a short story collection that contains in it 1922, Big Driver, Fair Extension, A Good Marriage, and an afterword, of course. Um, I have heard very little about this either way. You know like how Different Seasons is held up as like the Stephen King story collection? It's the one that everybody tells you to read because they are four amazing short stories. I haven't heard a lot about this, so I'm also fairly hit and miss with Stephen King's short story collections. Like, I do love different seasons, but I'm not a big fan of... what is the, the most recent one? Bizarre of Bad Dreams. I wasn't super impressed by Bizarre of Bad Dreams, but Different Seasons is amazing, so I'm curious about these short stories. Then I have some novels that I have like varying degrees of knowledge on. So I have Gerald's Game, which is a novel that I actually started at some point and got uh, 22 pages in. Obviously something that I will have to restart. Again, I know fairly little about this. I think I picked this up at the point where I was literally just going to the bookstore and picking up a few Stephen Kings at a time, and then I never got to this one. I also have Insomnia, which I am a little bit further in. I am 95 pages into this. Now, I do remember picking this up. I was in my second year of university, and this was the book that I was reading right at the end of August into the beginning of September when school started, and I have a very distinct memory of sitting outside of my children's lit lecture hall uh, waiting for the class to switch out so I could go in for maybe like the first two or three classes reading this in the hallway but then after that the reading for the rest of my coursework took over and I never picked this back up again so I do know that this is about a guy who is struggling to fall asleep and that's about it. The next book I have here is a book that sounds very problematic but again I picked up from a used bookstore because I was just sort of indiscriminately picking up things by Stephen King when I saw them and I knew very little about it but I think in the first video when I mentioned it people were like "Ooh, put that one off as long as possible because butt weasels and that Plus the summary on the back, which says, 25 years after saving a Down syndrome kid from bullies, Beeve, Henry, Pete, and Jonesy, now men with separate lives and separate problems, reunite in the woods of Maine for their annual hunting trip. But when a stranger stumbles into their camp, disoriented and mumbling, something about lights in the sky, chaos erupts. Soon the four friends are plunged into a horrifying struggle with a creature from another world where their only chance of survival is locked in the shared past and in the dream catcher. So we have um, a couple of concerning elements here. First of all, the representation of difference and disability has not always been good in the past. So just 
from passing, I'm concerned about a person with Down syndrome being the catalyst for the development of our protagonists. I'm a little bit concerned about the warning about butt weasels, because that just sounds bonkers, and the fact that it's framed around um, a Native American object, like, also a little concerned, because as far as I am aware, Stephen King does not identify as Native American. So there's a lot of things that I'm a little bit hesitant about with this, but also, at the same time, butt weasels. The next book I have here is from a Buick 8. I picked this up again because I was just collecting Stephen King things when I saw them for cheap and this was $4.99. This was back when I worked at the pharmacy and we had one of those little like discount book spinners. Again, I know nothing about, but Stephen King. That is a great reason to pick things up, right? The next book I have here, I picked up in the same way, but I am excited to read because one of my coworkers who is a Stephen King fan, this was her first Stephen King book and she remembers it being terrifying in the same way that I remember Pet Cemetery being terrifying. It was my first Stephen King read. So I am excited to read Cujo, which is, I assume, about an evil giant dog. And the last book I have here, I think I've had ruined for me by the Dark Tower series, but I would like to read it anyway because I love the Dark Tower series, and that is Salem's Lot. From what I understand, vampires also beginning of the career Stephen King goodness, because I find that there's a certain, like, chunk in the middle. Shall we be diplomatic? They're not all winners. I mean, he has so many books, they can't all be winners. At least they can't all be winners with every person. Like, I don't think that there is any one person out there who loves, like, genuinely loves five out of five stars every single Stephen King book. Like, surely if you've read the body of his works or you've read a chunk of his works, you have favorites, you have preferences. My point is I tend to prefer his earlier works. That just seems to be the trend. So I'm very excited to pick up Salem's Lot to sort of flesh out Dark Tower knowledge, Dark Tower world building, because that's always excellent. The Dark Tower, I think, is my favorite work by Stephen King. The whole thing. The whole thing. Even The Gunslinger. I didn't like The Gunslinger, but it's a part of my favorite thing, which is the whole series, so I will accept it. But yes, so I am excited to read this. I think out of the two, four, six, eight books here, other than um, Sleeping Beauties, which I've already started, I think Salem's Lot is sort of my highest priority on this list of books just because of its connection to the Dark Tower series, but the internet is full of you amazing humans who have probably read these things. If you have a recommendation for where to go after Sleeping Beauties and Salem's Lot with this stack of books, I would appreciate it. I would appreciate your thoughts on these things because it's always fun to hear people get passionate about these books and get me excited to read these things. The last book I want to share with you is not a Stephen King book, but fits into this and you will see why. So this is Stephen King's The Dark Tower, The Complete Concordance, revised and updated by Robin Firth. This I will read after I finish my own analysis on the Dark Tower series. So currently the scripts are scripted and I am, this is a pre-filmed video at the end of August, but um, I have pre-filmed all of these because I want to save all of my time in September for filming and editing the Dark Tower series because I do really, really, I'm super excited about this. I'm super excited to talk about this with you guys. So I do really want to get that together. I would like to start reading the few Dark Tower criticisms and companion texts that exist because believe it or not, because the Dark Tower is both popular fiction and within that fantasy and horror, which are often not taken as seriously as science fiction, which is forward-looking um, and often forward-looking with a feminist lens, which academics like. They don't super like 
horror and fantasy, and I think The Dark Tower is more in that box, there's very little criticism on it. And so I would like to give this sort of supplemental text and other supplemental texts a read sort of after I've collected my own analysis. I know that's not how you do scholarship. You do try and do all the research to begin with. I have done research, but I've done research on like the key terms and things that I see influencing this because this is Stephen King sanctioned. This, this has a foreword by Stephen King. And you know that I don't care about what the author thinks, and so I don't want to include this because Stephen King has put his stamp of approval on it. Does that even make sense? I hope that logic makes sense because I want to keep my Dark Tower stuff as separate from any authorial input as possible. Those are my unread Stephen King books. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if you have any recommendations for where to go next out of the things that I do currently own. I'm trying to avoid purchasing more books at this point in time. If you liked what you saw today, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye!